Good evening, everyone. This is a review of for the second midterm that you have on uh, Tuesday, this coming Tuesday. Uh, I decided that I will only cover Excel for for the uh, for the second exam and will leave access to the final. So uh, we will do Excel, just Excel for this uh, for this exam. You will uh, need to know the break-even analysis, which is chapter seven, the trend analysis, which is uh, chapter eight, uh, and chapter 10, which is the pivot table. So three main things that you will need to know, seven, uh, eight, and 10. Hopefully that, uh, I mean, will help you do better and, and um, bring up your averages, those who do not have a, uh, a good average on the first midterm. I know those who took the makeup did not yet get their um, grades back, but they, sh they should get it this weekend so they know exact. Now, you really need like to watch the video um, for, for, uh, for the review and make sure that you can answer each one of them because the exam will be very similar to what you are seeing right here. Okay, now you can see on the left the exam questions and on the right the sheet that you will be working on and it says download uh, the sheet and save it as review to uh, last name we'll go and hit save as and we'll name it review to underscore your last name And um, you want to add a documentation sheet and enter your name in B3 and today's date in B4. So I'm going to click on a new sheet and in B3, I will put in my name. And the date is equal to today. And as I said last time, you are expected to put the labels and to call that sheet documentation. Okay, now we normally we would put that at the beginning, but um, anyway. Um, Go back to the first one. Remember that this will take you to the very first um, sheet. Now, go to the expenses sheet. Calculate the total fixed expenses and the total variable expenses. Use the appropriate form. Okay. So here is the expenses. I want to calculate the total fixed expense. I know that I want to sum all of these. So very simple. I'm going to say sum, and it says, do you want to sum from B2 to B5? And that's right. And then the variable cost, again, I will sum from B11 to B13. Okay, so I have here 3,600 and here 23. And you, and you get like five points for that. And then it says uh, go to um, use the autofill, go to the break even, I'm sorry, go to the break even sheet and enter a formula to copy the fixed monthly expenses and the variable expenses you calculated in the expenses sheet. So I know that this is in um, B6 and B14. So in break even, I'm going to write here is equal to, and I will go to the expenses sheet, click on B6 and hit enter. So it will automatically type for you uh, the 3600 without you having to, to type it again for the variable equal to and I will go to the expenses sheet and click inside of the cell that has the variable the total variable expenses so now I have the total fixed and the total variable I hope you would like if you do not know weren't sure about this that you really uh, watch the, the video one, one more time. 
again it, it will be a short video so hopefully uh, you can watch it several times now on number four uh, five it says use an autofill to fill in the units column which is this column right here from 0 to 80 so I'm gonna write 0 and 1 and 2 and now I have enough to fill in a pattern so I'm gonna go all the way until 80 And um, then it says, insert the appropriate formula in cell E uh, first. And then enter the appropriate formulas to fill in the whole table. So I need to look what this table is telling me. And again, we are not in 204. So I expect you to know how, um, how to calculate things on your own without me telling you calculate the revenue, calculate the fixed expense. That's the table. See how you can calculate it. So if I sell zero units, what should be my revenue? It is zero. Now, what will be my fixed cost? Even if I do not sell anything, I still have to pay the 3,600. That's the definition of fixed cost. They are they're not dependent on what you produce. And, and let's look at them. It's the mortgage. You will have to pay the mortgage irrespective. You'll have to pay the taxes, the utilities, the repairs. So this has nothing to do with the product that I will um, produce, how much I will produce. The, what, how much I will produce will really depend or will affect my variable expenses. So I will have to hire more if I want to produce more. I will have to buy more supplies. I will have to buy more utilities. So for the fixed cost, uh, it is equal to, and I'm going to click on the cell that has the fixed expenses. The variable expenses, if I don't buy anything, then the variable expenses will be zero. My total cost would be equal to the fixed cost plus the variable cost. And my total profit is equal to my revenue minus my total cost. So at that point, I'm losing 3,600 because I'm, I have to pay the fixed expense. Now, I can't use the formulas right now to fill in the whole table. I will have to finish the first row and then I will be able to paste. So in one... It's equal, the revenue is equal to the units multiplied by the, the price per unit or the per unit revenue. But remember, I'm going to fill the whole table. So by now you know what, how to uh, adjust the formula uh, if you have a fixed cell. I don't have multiple revenues, it's just one. So I want to fix that B7. I want to always use the B7 uh, for the revenue per unit. My fixed cost will always be equal to the B5. So I'm going to fix the B5. And it's not affected by the units, so we don't need to multiply it with anything. My variable cost, as we said, is the amount it will cost me to produce a unit. So that's equal to the 23. And again, the 23 is fixed, so I'm going to fix it. And fixing it means putting a dollar sign before and after the column name, so the variable cost is equal to B6 multiplied by the units. And the units change, so I don't need to make change to the B11. My total cost will be always equal to the, the fixed cost plus the variable cost. And my total profit is equal to my revenue minus the total cost. 
Okay, now I am ready to copy the formula and paste it down. So now let's do that up until 80. And I can see that up until 46 units, I have a loss. But starting from 47, I have a gain. So my break even is actually something in between the 46 and the 47. Okay, remember the break even point is the point at which, or the amount, the quantity that when you produce will just cover your expenses. Your expenses, your total expenses are equal to your total revenue at that point. So, and, and we said that it has a, the formula uh, for the, for the break-even point is equal to the fixed cost divided by, by revenue uh, per unit minus the variable cost. So let's write it. It's equal to, we said it's the fixed cost divided by, and I, because there are two values in the de denominator that I have to put a parenthesis, and it is the revenue minus the variable expense. And I close the parenthesis and hit enter and see, it actually had the 47. Why? Be we cannot actually, I, I told you that it's between the 46 and the 47, but really you cannot uh, produce half a, a unit cannot produce a half a unit so it's either either you go with 46 and 46 you have a loss of 58 dollars or you go with 47 and you have a gain of 19 dollars so the exact one is something between the 46 and the 47 but because these are units of production I will go with the 47 so the questions ask you to calculate uh, the break-even point now we want to create a break-even chart to show the break-even point. And remember, to show the break-even point, you need your revenue and you need your, uh, your total cost. Because we said it is the number of units that when you produce them, you just cover your total, your total expenses. So the way to do it is to first add one line. So plot the relationship between units and revenue. And it says here units and revenue. And then to add the total profit to it. Okay, let's see if we can add a series to it because I used another version and just by copying it and pasting it, it used to become, but we have a negative, that's right, yeah, we have a negative, that's why it was not uh, showing, so let's see.
Okay. So um, let me let me delete that and I should because I, I want to show you several several things because if I add I think revenue now you will be a bit um, a bit a, a bit confused. But let me tell you what I have done. I will add revenue first and then we'll repeat the whole thing so that uh, it will be clearer for you guys. Okay, let's repeat it again so that it will be clearer for you. Okay. So we need like uh, to create um, a chart that will uh, show us the break-even point. The break-even point is the relationship uh, between the revenues and the expenses. So the point at which the revenue is exactly equal to the expenses, that's the, the break-even point. Let's see if we can add a two-line chart right away. And again, it shows, it doesn't show them crossed. Uh, okay. And I'm going to change the the axis so that it starts with it does it does the intervals are let's say 20 and um,
Oh, I have the total revenue and the total profit. It's actually, and that's why the relationship are exactly the same. It should be total cost. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay. Yeah, I was going crazy <laughs> thinking that this is not... Okay. So we have the revenue here. And I keep on choosing the total profit and I meant it is the total cost. Okay. So let's take... Again, the units, the revenue, and the total cost. I was going crazy trying to think what's going on. Okay, and then we uh, click on insert line and to the D line. And here I have it. <laughs> um, I have the revenues and I have the expenses. Uh, I have the total cost, which is my total expenses. And here is my revenue. And right at 47, I have the break even point. So I'm going, the only thing that I don't like is the fact that these are so too crammed, so we'll have them by 10. So again, I will right click and choose format access. And uh, I'm going to change the interval from 1 to 10 and say specify it as 10. And to um, actually. Okay, so now I have the uh, 1, 11, 21, and so on. Okay, and um, I need to add a title. So I'm going to the layout, and I will add a title, and I will call that title Break Even Point. And uh, I may want also to add a label for the axis, even though I don't tell you. But again, as I said, in three or four, we expect students to do the right things. So I am going to um, choose axis title, the horizontal. And I will name it number of units. <laughs> And um, again, I will add an axis title for the vertical axis. And I will name it dollar amount. Or and I can actually format it as dollars. So for the number, I'm going to show it as a currency, and I will make sure that it is a zero decimal place. So here you have your uh, chart break-even point. One thing that is not on, on the test, but maybe on, uh, is not on this test, but will be on your test, is the goal-seeking. And the goal-seeking, you want to make also move that chart into um, a sheet by itself. So right click on the edge and choose move chart and move it to a new chart and name it break even chart. So it's right there, there is a break even chart right there has the dollars, it has your units and revenue and total cost and everything. Okay, uh, as I said, one thing that may appear on your test is what if I want to um, achieve a certain profit? If my goal is a specific profit, how much should I produce? So,
So I can go to a new line and um, I'm going to put my goal here as uh, my goal is to make uh, 6,000. And I want to find out what should be my um, my my units to produce. So remember, it is under data, and it is a what if analysis, and it's a goal seek, and it tells you um, that. Uh, Set the value, set uh, G92 to 6,000 by changing a cell the B90. Actually, we need like to set that this sheet will not work uh, because I have not set it to where the whole uh, row is um, Okay, so we are, let, let me try it one more time. So under the what if analysis, we'll go to goal seek and we'll say set cell C91 to 6000 by changing uh, the cell in uh, B91. Let's see if it will help us. So we need to actually be uh, at least um, producing 124 in order to be able to get the profit of 6,000. So, now let's go back. I'm, I'm gonna give you another example for the, for the, uh, the goal seeking so that it will be clear. But let's, let's finish this because I don't want the I don't want the video to be long for you. So now it says go to the statistics sheet. Insert a table around the data in A5 to E45. Sort the table on keyword A to Z and days of week. So going to the statistics. I see that I have a table in there. So I'm going, I don't know, I mean like it's a range, I'm sorry. So I want to convert that range into a table. I'm going to highlight it all. And I will click on insert and choose table. And I will make sure that it says table has headers. So now I have my table. I don't like these um, filters. So I'm going to click on data and turn off the filters. Now I want to sort, it says by keyword, 
A to Z, and then I want to add another level to sort by days of week. And days of week are days, so they are not, I don't want it A to Z or, or anything. I want to choose actually that it is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so on. So I want to, to, to list them, uh, to use the days, the order of the days in order to uh, sort them. So you have now the Apaches first, and then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then you go again into Oxford Sunday, Monday, and so on. So um, it's already sorted, and the, 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 the table is uh, created. One thing I may want to do is to change the name of the table. So I'm going to change the name of the table into uh, web visits. And remember, it doesn't allow you to leave space, so remove the space. So now the name of the table is called web visits. Now I want to create a pivot table that shows the average number of pages and the total visitors per day. So I'm going um, to click on insert and pivot table. And it says, do you want to use websites? Yes. And it created a new sheet for me that has um, a design that I can add. And it says, okay, I see here that one, the first column is days of the week. So the days of the week will be rows. So I will select days of the week. And as soon as I see that, I see that they have been added to the table. And I want uh, the average number of pages. So I'm going to click on pages. And I also need the visitors. Now I see here that it is sum of pages, but the example tell you average number of pages. So I need to make a change here to average. So I have average of pages and I have some of visitors. So now the only thing that I don't like is the word row label. So I will write website, site visits. And I will double click at the edge so that I can um, see. So that, that's 15 points by itself and uh, create a pivot table that shows the percentages of visitors for each day of the week at an appropriate title. Okay, so now I'm going to um, choose the first and last and you hit the control key to choose the second one. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Do not ever choose the total when you're creating. It says um, create a chart with the percentages of the visitors for each day of the week. Usually when they ask you for a percentage, they want a pie chart. So even though I don't tell you, but again, I assume that you will choose the right one. So pie charts are for, for percentages. When I want you to compare two things, usually you do it with a column chart. So I chose the website visits, the days, and the visitors. And I click on insert. Um, let's see if we can do it from here. Mm -mm. Okay, we'll insert. And we want a pie chart. But I want the percentages also included. So I'm going to click on it and I will say format the data series. And I want
No, I want to add data labels. I'm sorry. I want to add data labels, but I want them. I don't want the actual values. I need um, to format the data labels as percentages. And I want them to appear uh, out. So the data labels should be outside. So I just want the visitors, um, and you can see that when you when you remove the visitors, it makes the visitors the first one. You can then add the the pages. So everything looks fine. You can then add the pages. And remember to have them as average. So have the, the visitors first and then the pages. And you want to hide the fields so people are not confused. So now I have my visitors, the sum of the visitors, and average of pages is there. I can show it, but I, I, I choose not to show it, so um, that's the correct one for, for 10. Now the last thing is to go to the trend analysis sheet. sure if I have the right yeah here it is uh, the trend analysis sheet says um, go uh, draw a chart to show the correlation between advertising and sales so here is the advertising and the sales And I want to insert, again, a two-line graph. Uh, actually, I, I should put like a scattered, so I'm going to change that, uh, change the series chart into a scattered plot. So now you see um, that they are very closely related, that advertising and sales are very closely uh, related. You want to add a trend line so that you see are they clustered around that line or not. And I want to display an equation on the chart and I also want to display the R square on it. Uh, 
Now, what is the equation saying? It's saying that if as y uh, increases or at um, zero value of x, and that's the advertising, you will still have 1,066 uh, in sales. But as you increase x, by multiples of nine, then you would increase the sales. And usually you are using, you are doing the trend line in order to forecast for the future. So the equation, if I tell you forecast how much will be the sales if we uh, if we if if we spend uh, seven thousand dollars for billboard advertising, so if sales and advertising. So if I spend 7,000 in sales, in advertising, then my sales would be equal to 9.9 337 multiplied by 7,000 uh, plus the 1,066.9. So if I spend 7,000 on sales, then I will get um, 70,602 in, in sales. So let's format them so that you can see. If I spend 7,000, I will get And that's the end of the exam. So you need to know how um, can you draw a trend analysis or a trend uh, between two variables. You need to know how can you use the formula in order to forecast for the future. And actually, remember um, in, in the assignment, uh, in the lab and in the assignment, we actually had, let's say, um, several several uh, options for the for the advertising. So let's say if we have, we'll start by uh, 700 and then 800. So we'll have a multiple of hundreds, and now we will continue the trend. And we'll go and use the formula to calculate um, equal to 9.9337 multiplied by the advertising plus the 1066.9 
So if I spend 700, I'm going to get 80,000. You want to calculate these as uh, as a currency and remove the decimal places. So using the formula, that's um, your calculation. There is, of course, a variance between what's going, what's actual, and what's what the formula is saying. Okay, so again, we will move this chart into um, into um, a chart by itself, we'll call it trend chart. Okay, so here is your chart with the y, with the formula and the r square on it. Going back to the trend, uh, as we said that these are, let me make them, move that. I need to be moved one more line so that they are in the same uh, rows as the actual here. So if, if I want to use the forecast um, function, then I can, to see if, if the equation is correct or not. So I can write equal to, forecast. Now I open the parentheses and it tells me where is your x, that's the value that I want to forecast, and comma, and where are your known y's, y is the sales, these are my known y's, and um, another comma, it tells me where are my known x's, and these are my known x's. And I close the parentheses, and it says then that um, the forecast was actually 933. So I think there's something wrong with this formula. Because uh, the formula should be y equal to it might be minus the 1600. y is equal to um, Um, something x minus or like uh, mx plus b y is equal to mx uh, plus b 
and I'm not sure if in the equation they actually have it as a negative or not. Two thousand sixty six point nine nine point nine three. Actually, the number uh, Yeah, I think they have changed. Um, okay, I know what was wrong. Um, the formula is actually not not correct because it keeps on changing. So we have to uh, write the. M, which is the slope, and it is equal to nine point. I think it was nine point uh, nine three. And the B is equal to. One thousand sixty six. Sixty six. So that should be equal to the J value, and it has to be fixed for the whole table. That was the problem, actually. And you see that it, it is um, 1700. So um, the forecast function says it should be 933. The actual is 900. And the formula says it should be 1,717. Now, we are going to paste. And that, that solves our problem. Same thing here. If we forecast for the first, then I can now copy the forecast for the second. And 
and again I'm going to format it as a currency with no decimal places so you can see actually that the, the forecast and the, the trend the trend uh, formula are, are very, sim somehow similar somehow similar and then and if you look at the R square, the R square is 66.66, which means that uh, I'm not able, the advertising alone does not predict, fully predict my sales. It pre the, the prediction is, um, can only predict like 66% of, of the sale. As we said, if the relationship was strong, it would, you would see like a 90 or an 85 uh, that means that the major that the majority of the sales is accounted to by the by the advertising, but the correlation is not very strong, and that's why I'm not able to uh, use the equation to really predict exactly what will happen. You will see that the equation is off than what's actual, and it's also off than what the forecast in Excel is, is doing. The forecast is, is very similar to the actual because it's actually mimicking. It's looking what is the, the right correlation between these two and, and trying to tell. So that's all that you need to know for the test. So let's review real quick by going one uh, sheet at a time. For the expenses here, I need like just like to know that my total fixed expense is a sum of this and my total variable is a sum of this in the break-even chart, yeah, I'm sorry, in the, in the break-even uh, sheet, I need uh, to copy the values from the expenses chart. So remember, it is equal to, and I go to the expenses sheet and click on my total fixed. Same thing here. Say It says equal to, and expenses mm -hmm. here means that you are going into that sheet and clicking onto, onto the cell B14, which has the total value. And then I went and calculated uh, the formula. I entered the formula for every single variable in here. So I know my revenue is equal to the per unit revenue, which is the B11. Um, actually, it's the units multiplied by the revenue. Because I have only one revenue, I need to fix it. So I, that's why I put the, the, B, the dollar sign, B dollar sign. My fixed cost is fixed. So it will be B5. My variable cost is the, the B6 fixed because that's the cell multiplied by the B11. And B11 is, is variable. The units change, and that's why I don't put a dollar sign for it. My total cost is an addition of my fixed and variable cost. And the total profit is the difference between my revenue and my uh, total cost. So I fill all of that, and then I'm asked to calculate my break-even point, which is the B5 divided by B7 minus B6. That's the, your, your fixed cost divided by the difference between your revenue and uh, your variable expense. So that's what we did. Uh, in terms of the goal seeking, we said I can go in here and say uh, I want 6,000. Change me, uh, tell me how much should I have for the 81? How much should I produce? So if, um, if, if I uh, want to find out, I'm going to go under data and uh, click on uh, the what if analysis, choose the goal seek and say, uh, set cell uh, G91 to 6,000 uh, by changing cell this one here and I hit OK and it tells me OK if you want um, 6,000 then you need to have uh, to, calc to create 124 uh, units, which means like 125 units. Okay, I'm going to cancel this. And um, the next thing that we were asked to do was to create a break-even chart, and that's the relationship between 
my revenue and my total cost. So don't make my mistakes and make it total revenue. Uh, so revenue and total profit will have the same relationship. It will be two parallel lines, but it's the revenue and total cost uh, are the two where you have an intersection and it's right at the 47, which is your break even point. And then we were asked uh, also to do um, a pivot table. So in statistics, we first created a table. So we highlighted all of this and say insert table. And then we sorted the table this time on keyword from A to Z and days of the week. One thing you have to notice, days of the week are not sorted in ABC order, but in the order they are in the week. So Sunday appears first and then Monday and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. So in the sort, we showed you how you can actually use the custom list. And Excel will, will realize that these are names of, of uh, days and will tell you you want that order and, and you would accept. Then we went and created a pivot table by again highlighting the table and say uh, insert pivot table and we wanted the days to appear and then the visitors and the pages so as soon as I click visitors and pages they got added in here because they are numbers but then for the pages we want the average so we went and clicked value feed settings and changed that into um, an average rather than a sum. We were asked then to do uh, a chart, so I ha you can highlight these two columns only and say insert a chart and it will show, you will have to format, uh, show the data labels as percentages uh, and outside. Um, I think that's all. Yeah, that's all for for the Excel sheet. So I'm going to upload that and meanwhile you need to watch that video several times. Actually attempt to solve the, the exam yourself, the review yourself and then if you are not successful